Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I am a senior consultant and solution architect with Western Computer. I've been with Western Computer for 10 years in the finance area and then several of the areas of the product since then. So let's jump into our chart of accounts and the changes that are on the chart of accounts now. I'm gonna go in and we'll grab one of our account cards. I'm just gonna go to my savings account. And I'm going to go over here and point out that on the account card, we can set these accounts as reconciliation accounts. This isn't brand new to Business Central, but it's certainly more powerful in Business Central. It's a flag that we turn on and off. You'll also notice that Microsoft has come in and given us some help when we hover over fields. Now you're gonna get an explanation of what it is so that I don't constantly have to hit my question up here or my F1 to go out to the external help. I have a little bit of help right here within the card itself. The other field I want to point out today for us is this account category and the account subcategory. We've always had the ability to be able to define an account number as an income statement or a balance sheet. But Microsoft has come in and given us additional breakdowns from that. And from that, then we get functionality in the background that's going to help us start managing our account schedules. So we then define our balance sheet accounts as either assets, liabilities, or equity, or our income statements as income, cost of goods, or expenses. Once we choose one of these categories, we also have subcategories underneath that. When I drill into the subcategory, it's going to filter by the category that I'm looking at. So that now I can tell it whether it's cash, accounts receivable, prepays, inventory, so forth and so on. Liabilities would give me accounts payables and notes payables and things along those lines. I want to jump out to the account categories here to show you the larger list and discuss what it's doing for us. As it opens up, you're going to notice it looks very much like a financial statement. It's starting to give you that whole asset, liability, income, expense look going on. And here are the account categories that are defined in the very first option we have underneath the balance sheet in the income statement. After that, you're going to notice that I have a range of account numbers that are falling into this sub-account. Each time you add a chart of account card now and you choose the category and also the subcategory, Business Central is going to start populating this GL account in the category. So what starts happening is because of this, the system knows what account numbers are cash what account numbers or accounts receivable. And that's how the account schedules start getting built in the background. There's also an additional report definition that is used for cash flow statements so that we're able to do a default cash flow statement. And you'll see the balance out to the side. Now this is not a number that creates an underline underneath so I'm not able to drill into the transactions from this view. But in our fact box over here on the side, you're gonna notice that I start seeing the account numbers that are making up the line that I have highlighted. So that's handy to be able to know what accounts are actually getting fed into this GL account in category. Up in the ribbon, you'll notice that I can edit this list. When I edit it, I can add lines here. You're not stuck to what Microsoft has defaulted in. So one of the areas that I often see customers add to this are prepaid assets, so that I can start listing out my prepaid accounts and track them separately. 
So if I added that to this list, once I chose the asset and the prepaid sub account from the account card, Business Central is going to start populating that as well. Now, let me warn you, if you add a line to the account categories, you're going to want to click on this generate account schedules. What it's doing is it's sending those lines that you have added to the default account schedule. So let's talk about default account schedules. If I go to my general ledger setup, You're going to notice under the reporting tab now, I have an account schedule for a balance sheet, one for an income statement, and one for retained earnings. And then within this field, I define one of the account schedules that is in the account schedule list. The M balance, the M income, and the M retained are the defaults that come from Microsoft ready to go associated with the account categories and the subcategories that come in the system. But just because we have this as an option here, you can change it and make one of your account schedules the default, whereas it's what's being managed by the setup here. What this gets you is, I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this situation, but often I find customers will call in to support and they're saying, I added an account number to my chart of accounts, but it's not in my financial statement. It's not in the account structure. That's because we've not had this tie before of being able to default a balance sheet in an income statement, whereas we have that now. If these are set up for the balance sheet, the income statement, and the retained earnings statement that you use, then when you create a chart of account number, it will add to that account schedule, or that value will be in the account schedule, and you'll no longer have this mismatch of numbers. So they've heard your cries, and they have fixed that as an issue. When you do the generate account schedule, that function does two things. It updates those defaults, and it also allows us to go back out to our role center, whereas the default that we have on the general ledger, one of the action buttons we have on our role center. So I've got my balance sheet. I'll just run it real quick to show you what comes out of the box. Or I guess out of the cloud, I should say now. So here's just the defaulted balance sheet and the look and feel of it. I have a couple of options available to me now, though, that we haven't had in the past, which is super nice. In the past, when you create an account schedule, you have a row number, but that row number never printed. It was just used for formulas and things along those lines. and if you wanted your account number to actually print on the report, you then had to put that account number in the description. What they've done is they've come in now and given us the option to show the row number, and we can also print alternating shading. So you have that white, gray, white, gray, which is really handy if the report is really wide. So if you're doing a P&L that has multiple departments on it in columns, you can get that shading. So those are both nice options, and they're available on all of the reports now. So that reviews the new fields on the chart of accounts that gives us the ability to then create default account schedules and keep those account schedules in sync with our chart of accounts, which is huge 